Assalamu alaikum and good day ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International Business Forum, IBF Malaysia's virtual port tour series organized by the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Malaysia. Thank you very much for joining us on our second virtual port tour. About a month ago, we took you with us on a tour to the southern state in the Malaysian Peninsula where we explored the ports and terminals in the state of Johor. Today, for our second virtual port tour, we are grateful to have the collaboration and assistance of the Sabah Port Authority, as well as Sabah Ports, Sindhian Berhad. To bring you all across the South China Sea to the beautiful island of Borneo. Sabah is situated at the northern tip of, these of this beautiful island of Borneo, and it's guarded by the majestic Mount Kinabalu, surrounded by pristine coastline and gifted with some of the largest natural rainforests. I bet everyone is anxious to get going with the event. So without taking too much of your time, allow me to introduce our panel today. We would like to thank Mr. Felix Liangson, the General Manager of Sabah Port Authority, Madam Darlene Aloysius, the Senior Operations Manager of Sabah Port Authority, and Madam Siti Noraisha, the General Manager of Sabah Port Sundaran Berhad. We would also like to extend our thanks to the team that has been working behind the scenes to make this event happen. Now, without taking too much of your time, allow me to introduce our dear president, T.S. Haji Ramli. T.S. Haji Ramli hails all the way from this beautiful state of Sabah. He's also the international vice president for Southeast Asia for CILT International, as well as a board member of the Sabah Port Authority. Allow me to welcome Duan Haji Ramli. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Reshma. Very good afternoon to everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and a very good day, everyone. We pray that everyone is in good health and following strictly to the SOPs that we all know too well already. Our utmost appreciation to Sabah Ports for having kindly consented to be the host for the tour, for this tour, and of course, not forgetting the all important operator in Sabah Ports, Serendian Berhad. We thank the CEOs of both organizations, INJ Felix Liangson of Sabah Ports Authority, the regulatory body, and Puan City North Aisha Azizan of Sabah Ports, Serendian Berhad. Our appreciation also goes to the organizer of this forum, which is the corporate communication team of CRT Malaysia, and also representing the International Business Forum for the Malaysian Group, uh, the team headed by Injek Muhammad Faiz Hakim and his team for yet another series on virtual port tour, which began with Johor Port uh, recently. More, I think more virtual port tours uh, will be coming up, I'm sure. And with other organization as well on other modes of transport at the same time. I thank every, every participant today for taking time in joining. It is uh, you that all makes the forum a success. I assure you that this port tour will educate us all in what port operations is all about in all the ports in Malaysia. This web webinar seeks to provide us all information that are vital in the workings of the logistics, transport, and supply chain industry. All the more, with the pandemic still around us, 
CRLT Malaysia has to fill the void in us less able to venture out and to do our normal chores, be it work or personal activities. Together with our international setup and our 37 other CRLT fraternities around the globe with nearly 40,000 members, everyone is doing similar programs. Start, started in 1919, we are now just over 100 years old and gosh, how the Institute has grown. The strength of the Institute is derived from the experience people of the industry from all the modes of transport, sharing their knowledge to the society at large and globally. Will seniority and experience set the direction of the professional institute? There are two pillars of strength that is being relied on to ensure that gender equality is maintained and pursued and that the younger generation has to be prepared to set to step in for its future development. The strategic pillars that I referred to are that of women in logistics or Willa in short, and the next generation simply called next gen. The guiding lights offered by the seniors and the two pillars of strength will ensure a very positive future for the Institute. CILT Malaysia boasts of nine branches or sections, as we call it, with nearly 4,000 active members. Here in Sabah, we are amongst the senior branches that had joined this professional associations since its inception in 2006. For that matter, CILT Malaysia was established in 1965. Being a body of professional logisticians, it is our duty to disseminate information and provide advisory role for the proper functioning of the system within the industry in the context of the arts and sciences involving the industry. Our existence and importance lies on the fact that we are not an ordinary association of professionals. The government sees the importance of our role and hence has put our association under the auspices, i.e. within the Ministry of Transport. Sabah Post Authority and Sabah Port Sindian Berhad had been a strong supporter of CRLT Malaysia and had been amongst the most senior corporate and active members and, and very active at the same time. It is indeed a remarkable achievement that seniority is reflected in the fact that of, out of the 50 odd fellow members in Malaysia, there are, there are seven fellow members from Sabah alone. That is a good figure to indicate how active we have been in the activities of CRLT Malaysia. As I said earlier, this port tour is going to be something special, which you can't find it in other ports in Malaysia. Sabah Ports has the unique distinction of being the only port in Malaysia that you will experience to have almost a complete operation under one roof. You will not regret it, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. Where else can you get port operation covering from container handling, general cargo, passenger, cruise liner, petroleum products handling, and what more, palm oil shipments? It's all here in Sabah ports handled by Sabah ports in Jaran Berhad under the auspices of Sabah Ports Authority as the regulating body. 
From its inception in 1968, starting from a T-shaped wharf at Potikinabalu port, which is now the site of the current Jesselton Point, Sabah, Sabah ports have grown leaps and bounds covering the whole part of Sabah in uh, I think eight ports, having the distinction, or again, having the distinction of being managed under one roof by Sabah ports under authority. I, for one, is looking forward to the tour for the simple reason that I want myself updated of what is the status of its sport development after having left the scene a long time ago in 2006. I'm also sure that many local Sabahans have not had the opportunity of visiting their own local town ports. Here we are in the comfort of our own homes. We will manage to observe seven or eight ports that will be visited today. Many aspiring young men and women who yearns for a career with a port, this port tour will provide you the best opportunity to have a first-hand information on what and how port operation is all about. Of course, to some, perhaps even how it looks like. To know about CIL Team Malaysia, do Google it. It's there for you. You can call Tuan Felix if you need to find out more about Sabah Ports. It is a good base for education, especially for the younger set of generation. You learn logistics. You will get to understand how the economy works as 90% of the goods are moved through logistics inputs. We cannot leave home without logistics. You need transportation to go somewhere. Such is the importance of logistics in our daily lives. In conclusion, I would once again thank everyone. I think the participant today comes from all the world over, right? And I'm thankful that uh, the good job that Rashma has done to promote uh, this uh, webinar. CRT Malaysia is very active in this type of forum, not just our central body, but in many of its branches, even including Sabah. For everyone's information, Sabah section is going to have its webinar on career development coming up. I, if I am right, it will be on the 10th of July at 8 p.m. Those keen in making the sea or the air as a chosen career. Don't forget to join us then. Parents are highly encouraged to join so that you and the children can plan together what is best for them. The key people from the right organizations will be at hand to highlight the career path that one has to take. I'm sure this will be further highlighted by the speakers from Savapos. There you are. Thank you once again and have a good day, everyone. Back to you, Rashma. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that wonderful speech. Um, now, I would like to actually introduce a very, very interesting gentleman who has dressed for the occasion. But before I invite him to the panel to give his uh, presentation, Tuan Felix Liangson, who is the General Manager of Sabah Port Authority. We would like to first share with you the corporate video from Sabah Port Authority. Over to you, sir, if your team can share the video now. Yes, hang on for a while. Thank you. Thank you, Risma.
Sabah has a wide range of multi-ethnic groups, blessed with a diverse landscape of tropical forests, rugged mountains, green flatlands, as well as pristine seas teeming with indigenous flora and fauna. Sabah has eight ports, which are accessible by international shipping. These ports are located at Kota Kinabalu, Sepanggar Bay, Sandakan, Tawau, Lahat Datu, Kudat, and Kunak. All the ports are under the jurisdiction and control of the Sabah Ports Authority. The Sabah Ports Authority, or SPA, is a state statutory body established in 1967 through the SPA Enactment 1967, which was repealed by the SPA Enactment 1981. SPA is by law empowered to exercise jurisdiction over eight ports in Sabah and to coordinate all port activities and developments in line with the increasing and changing needs of the state. On a regular basis, SPA studies the proposal on port development projects in line with the priority of port progress or growth in our state. In 2004, port operations have been privatized to private operator Sabah Port Sindran Berhad or SPSB. SPA acts thereafter as a regulatory authority to ensure that port operator performs according to the privatization agreement. It is also responsible for setting up the benchmark and port performance standards in order to maintain the efficiency and effectiveness of port operations. Furthermore, SPA acts as a middleman between the port users and the terminal operator in solving port and shipping related problems. As a licensing authority, SPA is empowered to issue license to the terminal operator to carry out port undertakings including the Sufferance Wharfs operation. Currently, the license is issued to Sabah Port Syndrome Berhad. It is vital that SPA maintains an effective supervision and monitoring function so that the services and facilities provided by Sabah Port Syndrome Berhad are in accordance with the standard established by SPA. Besides that, SPA is also responsible in ensuring that SPSB will only charge the services provided in accordance with the SPA tariff. Under the privatization agreement, the concession company is to comply with the operational standards established by SPA. These standards are based on comparable ports in Malaysia in respect of the standard of facilities and services provided by the concession company whilst carrying out the port undertaking. For this purpose, it is vital that SPA gathers statistical information on the cargo handled by SPSB as well as its volume. Pertaining to the development of ports in Sabah, SPA has the responsibility of ensuring that SPSB provides sufficient infrastructure and facilities in accordance with the 30-year port master plan and the national development policy. This includes the carrying out of the capital expenditure of 1.3 billion ringgit for such purpose. The Sepanggar Bay Container Port, which started operations in June 2007, is earmarked as the new gateway port for the Brunei Indonesia Malaysia Philippines East ASEAN Growth Area Region or BIM IAGA and as a strategic transshipment hub for this region and the larger global market. SPA plays a very vital role in the improvement of the port facilities and services in Sabah so as to ensure that these ports are arranged 
as competent, progressive and efficient ports in Malaysia. Thank you very much for that video. I hope everybody were properly entertained and informed uh, in terms of the um, facilities and the roles played by Sabah Port Authority. Now, though, I would like to introduce the general manager, Mr. Felix Liangston, who has really put on his traditional costume to bring you all the way to Sabah. So he's really bringing us all the way close. Now, Mr. Felix Liangson is also a chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. He has been with the Port Authority since 1984 and has worked his way up from assistant traffic superintendent to now the general manager. So allow me to um, pass the mic over to Mr. Liangson, sir, over to you. Well, thank you very much, Puan Reshma. Um, good afternoon. Salam Sabah Maju Jaya. The Honorable Datu T.S. Abdul Razak Abdul Malik, CLT International President, and T.S. Tuan Haji Ramli bin Amir, CLT Malaysia President, who is also the Sabah Ports Authority's Director. He was our former General Manager. Fellow CLT members, students, participants, in Malaysia as well as abroad. Well, first and foremost, I wish to thank the uh, Chartered Institute of Transport and Logistics Malaysia for organizing this virtual port tour to Sabah Ports Authority in collaborations with Sabah Ports and Berhad. It is indeed a privilege to be given this opportunity and as a CRT member, it gives me great pleasure to share with you all what Sabah Ports is all about. Well, before I go further, for the benefit of our friends who are not from Malaysia, I wish to share a little bit about Sabah. Sabah State of East Malaysia, forming the northern part of the great island of Borneo and bordered by Sarawak and Kalimantan, Indonesia, used to be known used to be known as um, land below the wind. So this is the mighty Mount Kinabalu, located in Kondasang, Sabah. And this is one of the traditional dance, we call it Magunatip, Maleo Basin, Proboskis Monkey, and these are the orangutans, and the tips of uh, Borneo, the northern part of um, Sabah. The yeah, Tun Mustafa Marine Park, Sekaran Marine Park, and Sipadan Island, Sibuan Island. <clears throat> and the uh, Kinabatangan River. Sabah Multicultural Ethnics. There you are. And um, of course, the uh, Sabah State. Administ administration center. Now, um, let me just introduce our board of directors and the uh, our management. On top is the uh, Datu Dr. Zaki Haji Gosmia, who is the chairman of SPA, and uh, followed by Juan Haja Amina Binti Haji Johan. She is the deputy chairman. And on the left side is um, Datu Dr. Johnson T. And um, the other one is Datu Muhammad Sahid Ajina Wapkan. And followed by Tuan Haji Rosdin Musidi bin Riman. And um, Tuan Muhammad Jasmin Jurpin. Next is Datu Mayang Omar. He was our former GM as well. And there you are, our CILT. President Malaysia, Haji Ramli bin Amir, and followed by Tuan Haji Muhammad Ibrahim, Muhammad Yasin, there myself, 
And the last but not least is the board secretary um, in Jekari Alliance. As for the uh, management lineup, myself there is GM and uh, the assistant general manager is in Jekari Alias. Juan Dolin Alicius, operation senior operation manager, will be with us later on presenting some of what's um, operation side and so on. And uh, followed by NJ Sulibang Tanjung, he is the uh, planning and development manager. And uh, Puan uh, Azrina Maru, she is the uh, finance manager. Puan Musna Liza Mustakan is the legal manager, now presently studying in um, UM, taking up master in uh, maritime law. And uh, Tuan Alba Nungkong, our security manager. Last but not least, Tuan Rakim Binsos, she's the human resource manager. Well, to proceed with, the Sabah is a unique state um, as compared to Peninsula Malaysia and Sarawak. Why? It is simple. Sabah has eight ports and are managed by one agency or organization, which includes Kota Kinabalu Port, Sepanggar Bay Container Terminal, Sepanggar Bay Oil Terminal, Sendakan Port, Tawa Port, Hadatu, Budak, and Kunan. Now, allow me just to explain briefly on the eight ports. Kota Kinabalu is one of the uh, Sabah's earliest and main ports which used to handle variety of cargo. But today, Sepanggar Port has taken over the majority, the major port role, sorry, and thus, Kota Kinabalu only handles non-containerized cargo, such as general and dry bulk, with some rural vessels. Well, on the other hand, Sepangga Bay Container Port has taken over container operation from Kota Kinabalu Port. And um, for Sepangga Bay Oil Terminal, it is a dedicated terminal for refined petroleum and uh, chemical products. We go to the East Coast. East Coast, we can find Sendakan Port, which is re renowned for its uh, palm oil industry, um, also handles some containers, general cargo and dry bulk. And um, after that, we find uh, Tawa Port, which is tragic location and close proximity to the Kalimantan Borneo. It is a multi-purpose port which is equipped with various essential facilities to support the handling of various cargo types. Lada too, is strongly supported by the palm oil industry and acts as the uh, central hub for the import of bulk fertilizer for the East Coast. Kunat, although it is quite a small port, but it serves as a dedicated crude palm oil, which also handles palm panel expeller. And lastly, Kudat, which is situated on the northern part of Sabah, it handles general cargo and timber related products. Now, besides Eight ports that I mentioned, there are also terminals or jetties that comes under the purview of SPA. These include the IOI oil jetty in Karamonting, in Sendakan, as well as the Tanjung Batu oil jetty in Tawau. Oil palm is the main product. In addition, Sabah ports also handles transshipment operations which are carried out in Sendakan, Tawau, and Lahada too. Cargoes involved are mostly rice and sugar, which are sent to both the Philippines and the Indonesia. As for butter trade operation, it is actually under the Port and Harbor Department, but Sabah Ports assist this department for the operations in Tawau and Lahada too until they have their own new duty. Now, following the Port Privatization Exercise in 2004, the port undertakings had been transferred to a licensed company. Now, as you can see, is Sabah Port Sunan Berhad. As a licensed port concession, SPSB has taken over SPA's responsibilities to manage and operate the ports. Hence, SPA, which acts as a regulatory authority, not only monitors the port operation, activities but also provide issues 
um, provide or issue licenses to uh, private jetty and uh, midstream operation. Sabah Ports Authority exercise regulatory functions in respect of the conduct of the port activities and the running of port facilities and services in the port by licensed operator, including the determination of its performance standards and standards of facilities and services provided by it under the enforcement thereof. Now, SPA actually is directly under the Ministry of Public Works, which is uh, also known as Kementerian Kerja Raya. SPA recognizes the need to regularly brief the Ministry of Public Works on any development or issues SPA is de dealing with. Well, this is to prevent misinformation from other parties on port matters and to allow Ministry of Public Works to respond or approve port matters timely. And uh, Sabah Port Authority has no direct control over the port operation, but SPA recognizes the need to establish a good professional working relationship in order for Sabah Port and Perhat to cooperate in carrying out tasks to provide port services efficiently. Well, just before I conclude, please allow me to say a few words on the uh, relocations of Indonesia's capital to Kalimantan, south of Borneo. The selections of East Kalimantan as the site of the new Indonesia, Indonesian capital would no doubt bring added impetus in improving A and C connectivity to Kalimantan as a whole and East Kalimantan in particular. Now, this will certainly impact A and C linkages in the broader sub-region as both sectors adjust to the anticipated changes in the A and trans C transportation dynamics for Kalimantan in particular. While these changes may be generated by factors within Indonesia, their implications are likely wide-ranging and could intrude into the A and C transportation equation for neighboring regions, including Sabah. Well, talk about COVID-19, the pandemic has resulted in severe global, social, and economic disruption. The shipping and the logistics industries are also affected by this pandemic. Whether we like it or not, we have to accept the new norm. So with that, my friends, just brief speech from me. Take care and stay safe. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Back to you, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You, the video was so nice especially looking at the rainforests, looking at that wonderful, beautiful beaches in the islands and the marine reserves and looking at all the different things and the different types of ports and terminals that Sabah has. Very, very different indeed from how it is operated in different parts of the country. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker on our panel, who is uh, Madam Doleen Aloysius, she's the Senior Operations Manager of Sabah Port Authority. Uh, Madam Doleen also started with the Port Authority since 1989. She has clocked in about 32 years with the authority. Please allow me to welcome Madam Doleen. Madam Doleen, are you here? Is it okay for me to try, uh, pass you the mic? Yes, Thank you. Let me share my screen. You look gorgeous today, by the way. Right, thank you so much. You're gonna share your slide, uh, your screen, right, ma'am? Yes, yes. Okay. Just a minute. No problem.
Okay, there you go. We're able to, yes. it's opening up. Yes, carry yeah. on, ma'am. Is that clear? Yes, please go ahead, ma'am. Right. Okay, thank you, Reshma. Very good afternoon to our distinguished guests, um, the Honorable T.S. Tonaji, Dr. Ramli Amir, the CLT Malaysia President, come our SPA board members, Mr. Felix Yangson, the General Manager of Sabah Post Authority, um, Madam Siti Noraisha Azizan, the General Manager of Sabah Port Sundian Berha, Tuan Haji Muhammad Faiz Hakim bin Hussein, the CIRT Malaysia Council Member, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Reshma, our lovely moderator, Miss Julia Ismail from Sabah Port Sundian Berha, fellow participants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored and grateful to be given the opportunity to present to you on the introduction of Sabah Ports Authority in this virtual port tour. So I'm going to start with Hold on. All right. Okay. Sabopot's authority, uh, Sabopot's authority in short is the statutory body established in 1968 under the SPA enactment, 1967, when then subsequently repealed by the SPA enactment 1981. SPA is a state ports under the jurisdiction of Ministry of Public, Pub, Public Works, Sabah. Our corporate vision is to be the effective port regulator, ensuring efficient and progressive port services to support the economy of Sabah. And our mission, one is to effectively plan, plan, propose, implement and regulate the statewide ports policies that are supportive and congruent to the state government's policy. The second one is to ensure the port services via effective uh, monitoring. The third one is to ensure the educate port infrastructure and equipment in tandem to the growth of the state economy. And the fourth one is to ensure the port adapt to changing environment in modernization of the ports via the application of information, communication, and technology. Following the privatization of the ports on 1st September 2004, the port undertaking had been transferred to the licensed concession company that is Sabah Ports Union Berhad, in short SPSB. But then SPSB has taken over the SPA responsibilities to manage and operate the eight ports in Sabah. As shown in this picture is our present chairman Datuk Dr. Zaki Haji Gusmia during the signing ceremony of Sabah Ports privatization back then in 2003, a year before the privatization. Now, after the Sabah Ports Authority rose after the privatization exchange to become the port regulatory by ensuring the, and monitoring the concession company that is Sabah Port Sudan Berhad to operate the ports efficiently. This is um, um, been provided under Section 8 of the SPA enactment privatization 1998. The Port Authority by then shall exercise the regulatory functions in respect of the conduct of the port activities and the running of the port facilities and the services in the port by a licensed operator, including the determination of its performance standards and the standards of facilities and services provided by it and the enforcement thereof. And as mentioned by my GM earlier on, this is the map showing the uniqueness of Sabah ports. Whereas uh, we have eight ports, at the west coast of Sabah, we have Kudat Port, Sepanggar Bay, Port Terminal, Sepanggar Bay Container Port, 
and Kotekin Abalu port. Whereas at the east coast of Sabah, we have eight ports as well, which is Sandakan port. We have the Karamunting and Sungai Motas or JT. It's also under our purview. Lahadatu port, Lahadatu or JT as well. Kunak port and Tawo port with Tanjung Batu or JT attached to it. Again, collectively, Sabah Port's handling of liquid bark is one of the highest in Malaysia, as everybody um, known, as the state is the top producer of oil palm export. Therefore, in the recent years, the oil and gas sector had added to the liquid bark volume. Again, um, showing here is the eight ports in Sabah. Um, I'll be showing uh, a short vi visual of each of the ports in my next slide. However, um, further explanation of the operation can, uh, will be presented by Sabah Port Sindian Berhad. I just um, uh, briefly go through each port. Okay, first one on the west port is Kota Kinabalu Port, which covers um, general cargo and rural operation, as mentioned by MIGM earlier on. And this is the visual view of Katakina Balupo. The second one is the Sepangar Bay Container Port. We aspire to become the transshipment hub in the Bim Yaga region. And next to Sepangar Bay Container Port is the Sepangar Bay Oil Terminal. This is the dedicated oil terminal adjacent to the Sepangar Bay Container Port. Next, we go to the East Coast Ports of Sabah. First one is the Sandakan port. This is the second largest city, the Sandakan. Sandakan port handle mixed cargo as well. Like that is general cargo, dry bulk, container bulk, and liquid bulk. It's a new wharf. We get to the Tawau port. Tawau port is the th third largest, I mean, the Tawau is the third largest city. Also handle mixed cargo, that is general cargo, dry bulk, container, and liquid bulk. And this is the aerial view of Tower Port. The next one is Lahada 2 port. Lahada 2 is a general cargo port, handle uh, dry bar, liquid bar as well. And next one is the Kunak port. It's a dedicated oil jetty, which have the conveyor belt system for the dry bark. It's a beautiful scenery here. And the last one is the Kudak port. Kudak port is a small port, uh, handle general cargo and the future transition to be the ferry terminal. Okay, beside the eight ports, we have Tawau Ferry Terminal, which is uh, located in the Tawau. This is an international ferry terminal um, that can handle eight ferries with a capacity of 1,000 passengers a day to Tarakan and Nunukan, Indonesia. 
So the facilities they have is a custom one checkpoint, immigration and uh, with eight counters. So this is a daily um, ferry terminal, but unfortunately as this pandemic, the terminal is still closed at the moment until uh, the government decided to open up the, the border. Sabopot's authority also handle and issue private JT and midstream license. So can we see here is the private JT issued around Sabah. We have 124 private JTs and uh, 23 midstream in operation at the moment. Um, the, the grand total of 147 license throughout Sabah. And one of the example of the private JT license issue is for the Sabah Ammonia Urea plant that is Samur, located in Sipitang. It's about 144 kilometers from KK and uh, closest to Sarawak border. So this, um, this Samur is under the Petronas chemical group. Another example of a private JT license under Sabah Ports is the Sabah Gas and Oil Terminal, SOGT, located in Kimanis Sabah, Papar Sabah, owned by the state government, undertaken by Petronas Chalgali. Last but not least, our corporate motto is Better Ports, Better Sabah. This Better Ports, Better Sabah signify that SPA has a fiduciary responsibility to continually strive towards improving port facilities and services for the ultimate benefits of the people of Sabah. This is in line with Sabah Maju Jaya. It's the state initiative development plan which uh, covers from the year 2021 up to 2025, which uh, the frameworks of direction and strategy to drive the state economies of Sabah as a whole. So with that, if should you have any question, you can reach us via this website and email. So I end up my presentation today. Over to you, Reshma. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. What a wonderful presentation. And I love the slideshows where you actually gave us an aerial view with a little bit of a video footage. So we get to see generally how the port looks like, the terminals look like. Thank you very much. So we have a lot of the audience today that are really interested to even have your slideshows. So for all of you who are attending today, this session is also being recorded and it will be shared on our YouTube channel. So in that YouTube channel, when this video comes out, you would see the email addresses that uh, Tuan Felix and uh, Madam Dolin has shared with everyone. So if you would like their slideshows, please address your emails directly to them to get their consent uh, if they would like to share their slideshows with all of you. Thank you very much, Madam. That was wonderful. Thank and um, now is the time for us to do something rather different. Now, before I bring in um, Madam Siti Noor Aisha, she's an amazing lady to come in and um, speak to all of you. She wants me to take you all on this virtual tour. And she is your guide today. So allow me now to share these, the um, wonderful virtual port tour that Sabah Ports has organized and arranged for us. Give me one minute to connect you to it. Okay, here we go. Tighten your seat belts, everyone, and get ready for this. Are you able to hear? 
just would like to check if everyone's able to hear. Maybe I will, yeah, I will get the sound up now. Sorry about that. I'd like to wish a very good evening to all who are joining the visual port tour with Sabapots. I hope everybody is in the best of health and keeping safe. I'd like to extend my appreciation to the organizer, the Chartered Institute of Logistics Transport Malaysia, for collaborating with Sabapots in the visual port tour series. I am Siti Noraisha Azizan the General Manager for Corporate Services of Sabah Port Sendran Perhad. Sabah Port Sendran Perhad, SPSP, is located in Sabah, Malaysia. We operate and manage eight ports across Sabah. In a sense, we are quite unique as we manage multiple ports across the state. Most Malaysian ports adopt the model whereby one operator or one authority manage a single port. However, it is quite different with Sabah ports. By being the sole operator managing the operations of the eight main ports in Sabah, it has enabled us to achieve better coordination, better planning, and better synergies among our ports. Sabah is well known for its abundance of natural resources. Among Sabah's strong economic features include agriculture, mining, and oil and gas. Sabah is also blessed with many natural attractions and pristine islands. Our natural inheritance is something all Sabahans feel very proud of. For those who are keen to experience nature and culture at its best, we warmly welcome you to visit Sabah the land below the wind. It gives me a great pleasure to take you on a visual tour of Sabah Ports and to start our journey, I'd like to take you for an online visit starting from our East Coast Ports. Sandakan Port is one of the eight port in Sabah and it is the second busiest port. It is located at the east coast of Sabah. Sandakan Port is a multi-cargo port and being a multi-cargo port, we handle various types of vessels such as military, ferry passenger, container, bulk, conventional, tanker, barge and complete. We also handle various types of cargo such as liquid bulk, dry bulk, bread bulk, container and also general cargo. At Sandakan Port, our main commodities are palm oil, petroleum, fertilizer and rice. Sandakan Port also provides facilities such as Birding facilities. Birding facilities, we have our main wharf, which can accommodate at least four vessels at a time. And this is to cater for all vessels that call in at Sandakan Port, except for tankers and barges. For tanker and barges, we handle them at our Karamunting Oil Terminal and also at Maltas Oil Terminal. Other than birding facility, we also do provide storage facilities. We have three units of warehouses and open storage and also container yard. Last but not least, in order for us to handle container and general cargo, we do have our cargo handling equipment. For those who are interested, to know more about Sandakan Port, please visit us at www.spsb.com 
dot my. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Hayati Muhammad Inabji and I'm the manager for Lahadatu and Punakpot. Welcome to Lahadatu and Punakpot. Both of our ports are strongly supported by the palm oil industry. Our ports are located at the east of Sabah and we are handling various types of cargo such as liquid, dry bark and bread bark. In Lahada 2 port, we have 5 birds with deepest draft of 12 meters. Meanwhile, in Kunak port, we have 3 birds which dedicated for tankers and farm kernel expeller conveyor system. The major product handled in both ports are palm oil and dry bark cargo. Other than bird facility, we also provide warehouse and open yard for cargo storage. Equipment such as rich taker, shuttle carrier, container spreader and forklifts are ready to handle containerized cargo in future. Thank you and stay safe. everyone welcome to Tawapot. I am Haja Tanwali Muhammad Tahir, manager of Tawapot. I would like to bring you to a virtual tour at Tawapot. Tawapot is located at the east coast of Sabah. Tawapot handles containers, general cargoes, rebuck cargoes, transshipment and butter trade as well as oil and gas. Tawapot also handles private jetty, midstream, and Tawapot have main wharf and oil terminal at Tanjung Batu. And main, at main wharf, we have three birds at outer berth and two birds at inner berth. Whilst at Tanjung Batu oil terminal, we have one jetty for oil and gas tanker berth at one time. For equipment ability at Tawapot, we have two mobile harbor crane, seven risk takers, two 10-ton forklift and four units, three-ton forklift. As for the empty container handler, we have four units and eight prime movers, spreader 40-footer and 20-footer. We have two units each and trailer 60-ton, four units. Main commodities we handle at Tawapot. As for export, we have seafood products, sawn timber, plywood and PKE as well as PKS. For the import, we have fertilizers, rice, maize, and soya bean, and steel. Hi everyone, my name is Captain Hafizi, General Manager Operation for Sabahport Sudia Merhat. Sabahport has initiated various improvements to increase port efficiency since its privatization. This includes investing significantly in strengthening the port fleet of cargo equipment, commissioning upgrades to jetty facilities, and investing in new technology to amplify digitalization at the port. Sabahport is committed to upgrade its services and facilities, especially in view of the expansion of Sapanga Bay Container Port. Sapakan Bay Container Port is our flagship port handling almost 70% of the state's container volume. SBCP holds high potential to become a focal point of the BIM Yagas region's shipping cluster as well as a hub for containerized cargo. 
SPCP's expansion will include extending its wharf length to cater for more vessels and expanding the container yard to enhance SPCP's handling capacity from 500,000 TEUs to 1.25 million TEUs in the future. The expansion of SPCP is a major trust for the state's ports and logistics development and is a vital component in catalyzing industrial activities in Sabah and, most importantly, enhancing the state's long-term economic competitiveness. Good day. I am Joseph Bulohok. Manager for Sepanggar Bay Container Port. Welcome to Sepanggar Bay Container Port. This port is strategically located along the shipping road between the Far East and Europe. It has taken over the container operation from Kota Kinabalu is positioned as the premier transshipment hub for the BIMP Yaga region. It has taken a port of international standing SBCP, both state of the art facilities, the ability to handle more container, more efficient and effective operation in greater competitive freight charges. This port has three out above and two in above. It has a depth of 12 meters and this port can handle the maximum vessel size of 45,000 dead with tons. Port capacity can handle 500,000 TUs per year. Its container yard is 2,800 ground slot with 292 units of paper points. For the LCL container, we unstaffed and stored in the container freight station. Hi, I'm John Harris, the port manager of Kota Kinabalu and Udat Port. Kota Kinabalu Port is one of the seven ports in Sabah, which handle provisional vessel located on the Borneo's northwest coast on the South China Sea. It is the capital and main commercial and industrial center for the Sabah state in Malaysia. Kota Kinabalu Port have seven berth facilities with a total length of 790 meters to accommodate 1,600,000 dead weight ton ship, 5,002 meters square of warehouse, and 16,500 meters square open area for the cargo storage. Currently, Kota Kinabalu Port have a fleet of cargo handling equipment consists of 16 units forklift, 5 units towing tractors, and 18 units. A 
apart from general cargo storage facilities, Kota Kinabalu Port are also having CIQS terminals which handle cruise ship and cruise chains and supply for passengers. Kota Kinabalu Port are also provide fresh water supply and bunkering service. Kota Kinabalu Port handle many types of commodities such as mesh, soybeans, rice, rubber, iron steel, timber, and construction materials. Other type of commodities handles is brand new and used vehicle and heavy machinery such as lorry trucks, excavators, and project cargo. Hi, my name is Shalia Dikasip. I'm the port manager of Spangan Bay Oil Terminal from Sabah Coast and Bahar. We are the leading bulk oil terminal in Sabah. Welcome. Our port is the one and only port in West Coast Sabah that handles petroleum products with companies related with the oil and gas industry. Our main customers are Shell, Petronas, Petron, and Sabah Chemical when handling products from Sapangar Bay Oil Terminal Jetty. Besides receiving oil and gas from the vessel, our port has bunkering services to vessel especially for products like ADO, which is new business for Sapangar Bay Oil Terminal and is steadily developing nowadays. Safety is our priority in handling high flammable product. So our port is provided with firefighting system installed around the port area starting from the jetty to the user. One of the port advantage is the safety assured by the Navy that is nearby the port and our port has its own auxiliary police patrolling the port area 24 hours. For your information, our port is provided with JT consists of two berths. The main berth is dedicated for oil and gas vessel with a maximum size of 30,000 deadweight ton with the length of 82.32 meters and the inner berth is dedicated for bunkering and has a maximum vessel size of 1,000 deadweight ton with the length of 45.73 meters. The JT provided with 10 common pipelines and 7 out of 10 common pipelines are measured at the size of 10 inches while the other pipelines are size 8, 6 and 3 inches. These pipelines are attached to a modern marine loading arm or MLA.
Well, that was an excellent video. I hope all of you enjoyed it. I would like now to introduce uh, Puan Siti Noraisha, the general manager of Saba Ports in Deer and Burhat. So she took you, she was our guide just now, and she took you for that little tour and showed you all the facilities that the different terminals in Saba offers. One of the things we've noticed apart from the different types of terminals, we see a lot of gender balance in that port. A lot of females, we see a lot of our ladies in senior positions and as well men. It's excellent to see what wonderful gender diversity we see in these uh, various terminals under Saba ports. So allow me now to introduce to you and to bring now the mic to our dear Puan Siti Nor Aisha, who also is uh, CILTM uh, Saba section chairperson as well. Puan Siti, are you here? Can you take over? Hello. Thank you, Reshma. You're welcome, so, Puan. That was an excellent, excellent tour you took us through. Tell us a little bit more about um, how we all able to manage such wonderful gender balance. I can see wonderful gender <laughs> diversity right there at the terminals everywhere. We've had a few of our guests actually comment that saying, oh, it's so nice to see so many female managers along with their male counterparts. Well, um, Reshma, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for uh, watching the video just now. Um, actually, we are quite uh, balanced here in a way uh, in terms of the uh, management level and also the uh, uh, so-called uh, in terms of uh, the, the personnel that managing our ports. Um, actually, there are more uh, guys <laughs> managing the port, but yeah, we are quite proud uh, that we have three uh, lady port managers managers managing uh, three of our eight ports. And uh, uh, basically, not only that, actually, um, uh, <laughs> in Sabah Port, our, even our lady boss, yeah, our big boss is a lady, Datu Ang Kiat Min. And uh, of course, um, there are uh, three uh, general managers uh, in our management level. And um, uh, we are uh, two of them, myself and also uh, Madam Lai, uh, two general managers. And of course, Captain Hafizi just now, uh, he's the only, um, of course, <laughs> you know, taking the uh, position as a GM operation. So uh, basically, uh, um, this is not, uh, how do you say, uh, all the ladies that is taking the position, managerial level, is uh, by merit and it's not <laughs> something that, uh, you know, uh, we sort of like just put them in to balance the gender here. But uh, uh, Reshma, we have a very good and a very potential, uh, you know, uh, line of uh, managers here that, that is actually, you know, uh, very talented and also, you know, they have the capability to, to hold higher position uh, in terms of uh, the port operation here. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yes, obviously, I can see that when you and Dato Ng, with your leadership, wonderful things are happening right there in Sabah. And I'm pretty sure our audience was very, very um, informed entertained as well because they got to see the beauty of Sabah that I know that's close to my heart. I love Sabah and Sabahans as well. All of you are lovely, warm people. Um, we've had a few questions in our Q&A, but I believe most of the questions, Puan City, you have answered already. Yes. And um, the virtual tour is supposed to be for an hour, so we've gone a little bit extra, about 15 minutes into um, overtime. So if everybody is okay, and if there, maybe we can bring in all of our guests, all of our panels to, to the screen, if you can turn your cameras on uh, to Anne Felix, and we get a, gal a gallery view of everybody. Thank you so much. I will not be taking up any of those Q&A questions because you've already answered them. Thank you so very much for taking us to Sabah. I cannot wait for the MCO to be over. 
that is the first ticket I'm booking. I really actually I want to climb that Mount Kinabalu for the second time too and jump into the seas there. Thank you so much. And thank you very much, the audience. Um, thank you to Juan Felix, uh, Madam Darlene, Juan Siti Nor Aisha, and of course, our president, sir. Thank you, sir. It's such a pleasure working with you, sir. And have a great day, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our virtual port tour. And thank you, uh, Fires. and see you all, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe and get vaccinated. Very important.